Okay, so it looks like I got most of our, our uh, waiting room looks like it's ready to roll. Um, I don't see anybody transitioning in. So we will go ahead and get started right at seven o'clock. First of all, thank you all for welcome or for coming. Um, Robert, I know you're with me. Can you see my screen okay? I just want to make sure I'm not talking to myself. No, you look good. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Donnie Raff. I'm actually the principal here at Beckman High School. And with me tonight, I've got Robert Melendez, who's a counselor and professor at Irvine Valley College. Um, as we get going, down in the bottom right or left in some slides, I've got a, a QR code that has questions on top. If you have questions, maybe after the fact, or you, you just don't want to share in the chat, you can feel free to scan that QR code and it'll pull up a form that'll allow you to, to send some questions my way. If it, if it pertains to the masses, I'll, sh I'll respond right in this meeting. If it's one that's more individual, the form actually allows you to, to enter an email. Um, so I'll just respond directly in an email with the answers. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, just a little overview of Beckman High School. So we are a high school, comprehensive high school, grades nine to 12, pretty standard with about 2,900 kids. Um, we are located in Irvine, but we actually are part of the Tustin Unified School District. That does get a little confusing. Sometimes people will look to contact us and they'll call Irvine Unified, um, but we are in Tustin Unified. We do serve the communities of Tustin, Irvine, and then there's actually a piece of Santa Ana that we serve. Um, at this point, we do follow a pretty traditional six period day. There's options for seven period that you'll see uh, when Robert presents about early college. Um, we've got a ton of extracurricular activities, arts, athletics. If there's an activity that a school offers, generally we probably offer it. Um, we've got roughly 120 clubs, 27 different sports uh, with all sorts of different levels. We'll, we'll go into some of the, the programs that, that uh, we have on campus here in just a few minutes. Um, if you want more information about that, this is a link to our school profile. Our school profile is actually what colleges see when our students apply. Um, they send their resume, they send their application, that we send their transcripts and a school profile. This just tells colleges what we look like and who we are. Um, and so there's a link to that if you'd like to see that as well. Again, I don't think I mentioned it in this, this session just yet, but this will be shared after tonight. I'm recording this session. Uh, actually recorded another one in front of this one just to be safe. Um, but we'll also share the slides and this recorded session um, after tonight's over. Um, so we're gonna start with our early college program. Early college is a, a program that's very unique to us. Um, and we're fortunate to have Robert Melendez here to talk um, from IVC. Robert's a great resource to us. He's amazing with our kids um, and is super responsive. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let him talk about this program. It's something that a lot of people show interest in. Um, so, Robert, I'm going to let you take it away. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. And then, hello, everyone again. My name is Robert Melendez from Irvine Valley College. I'm a counselor. So, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the particulars of the early college program. Um, as you'll see later, we'll have a more in-depth, thorough kind of presentation on this in March at the eighth grade in front, eighth grade student night, information night. But early college is ultimately a four-year program. Students would go in in the freshman year and they would take college courses all the way through their senior year. Those college courses that they take are IVC courses with IVC professors, and they are on the Beckman campus for the first three years of the program with the senior year courses that they take for Irvine Valley College at IVC. So that's important to know too. The course curriculum is built around general education. So this is a lower division general education. It's ultimately what students would be doing their first couple of years when they were at any university or community college. So it's the English, the math, the sciences, social sciences, arts, humanities, those sorts of courses. Specifically, the program in which they complete is called the Intersegmental General Education Transfer Curriculum, and that is IGETSI, 
and you can see it there. And again, that's going to take care of all the lower division prerequisites and requirements for probably about 90% of the majors at all the UCs and Cal States. Uh, there's some that just have very limited GE, like engineering and stuff like that. So that's the only ones in which, for the most part, I get C or the general ed would not cover. But it's not that the units don't count. The units still count for transfer. It's just for general education, it doesn't meet those requirements specifically. Now, kind of as you can tell in the way I'm kind of describing the program, this program is very much built around and for students looking to go to a UC or a Cal State. That's not to say that I don't think the program still has benefits for students that are going to private or out of state schools, but I definitely think the students that get the most from the program, not only from how it looks on their transcript and their applications, but also on how the classes count are gonna be those UC CSU bound students. But again, private schools, out of state schools are still gonna consider, look at and potentially use some or all of the courses. It really kind of depends on the specific school. Um, so yeah, let's go to the next slide, Donnie. On the next slide here, what you're gonna see is kind of a breakdown of those four years that I was alluding to. So the way you want to kind of look at this is that white area, the white rows, are going to be the high school courses. And then as you see the two kind of different shaded grays on the bottom there, the darker shaded grades where it says first semester, those are going to be the college courses that the student takes in the first semester of each of their years. And you can see the columns kind of broken down their freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So in the freshman year, first semester, they're taking counseling 10 which is a college study skills, history one, which is world history up to the 1500s. And then in the second semester, those classes finish in the first semester, counting 10 history one, all encompassed into that first semester done by mid-December. They go into the second semester starting in January after winter break, and they would take intro to music, uh, music appreciation, music 20, and then the second half of world history, history two. Those classes would go all the way until the end of the school year, roughly about um, beginning of June. And then that is it for the first year. And you can see how that kind of progresses as you go through. Again, the expectation is the students would be in freshman year, go all the way through senior year. The courses that are for the college, early college IVC courses, those ones on the bottom there in the gray um, columns or rows, I should say, those are all going to be through and at Beckman for the first three years, with the senior year again being up at IBC. In the senior year, you can see they're taking college writing, a critical thinking writing, um, bio with the lab, and then American government, that political science one. All right, so knowing that the classes are there, let's kind of talk about some of the benefits and opportunities that students get through this program. Number one, they're gonna get 51 transferable college units. So those are college course units that they're gonna get a college transcript from, a course from IVC, and also course credit on the Beckman High School transcript. That Beckman High School transcript, the majority of those classes are also gonna be weighted. And the weighting of those classes is very similar to like a weighting for an honors or an AP class. And the universities will see that with the weighted GPA on the Beckman transcript. So that's kind of that key dual enrollment piece to where they're getting credit at the college level with IBC and also getting credit at the high school level. Again, they're going to be completing IGETC, which is just that UC CSU general education. Now, some of the main advantages as it relates to being a college student is that because they're taking a college course, they are seen and treated as college students. So they can take part and benefit from any of the programs and services up at IBC. So of course that includes tutoring library counseling like you see there, but all the other things we do, um, tours to the different universities. Uh, we have industry professionals that come to our campus and do workshops all the time in our career center. Uh, we have our faculty doing workshops on the different majors and classes that we have. So it really provides a student an opportunity to maybe explore, experience, and hear about a lot of different things that they probably normally would not hear about while they were in high school if they weren't taking the college courses and taking advantage of some of these opportunities at the college campus. Now, the second to last rule is usually what excites parents the most. So when you talk about doing high school, in your high school time, doing college courses, 
what happens is the state of California actually waives the tuition for those college courses. So for the 51 college units, close to two years, because 60 units would be two years worth of college. So we're getting really close to that with the 51. For those 51 transferable college units, the student is gonna pay zero cost for the classes. There may be a cost for books, but not all classes have cost for books. But I can 100% tell you that for the course cost, that's going to be zero. So you're saving thousands of dollars, honestly, just from a community college standpoint, but tens of thousands of dollars as it relates to even university cost if you were taking that at a university. So definitely something to consider. And when you think about getting close to two years worth of credit, you know, ultimately you're getting free to very cheap the first two years and then they're just paying the tuition for the second two years at the university level it saves money for them to then use that money for tuition at the four-year level for those last two to three years they're there um, or even save that money for graduate school if that's what they're looking to do and again those units are going to count for a two-year associate's degree and towards a four-year bachelor's degree so with all these benefits What's kind of the downside, right? Is there some downside? I wouldn't say there's any downside to the early college program because I truly believe it's a great program for any and all students. I would say though, you have to have the right kind of mentality and kind of grit and ability to want to be successful in these classes. So again, I have no doubt every student can handle these courses. I'm not sure every student's ready to take these courses when they walk in in ninth grade, though. And what we're really talking about is making sure your students kind of have these traits and tangible skills to be able to be successful. So I've kind of alluded to the fact that these are college courses taught by college professors. They are truly college courses from the standpoint that they go on a college transcript, meaning that if a student does not do well in this course, they now have a D or an F worst case scenario in a college class on a college transcript. And we don't want that. As much as we want students to take advantage of these programs and trying to get a head start and really getting deep into their college curriculum, we wanna make sure they're successful. So you have to work with your student to kind of say like, okay, is this program right for me? Is maybe one of the other great programs in which you're gonna hear about here in a sec, um, maybe a better option for you. But those are things in which if you have questions, definitely reach out to me. You're gonna get my email in a sec here um, and we can kind of talk through. But I do definitely believe it's for all students. It's just, you need to make sure you're at the right place to be able to make sure to take advantage of it for sure. All right, so how does this all kind of get started? Well, number one, we kind of do the kickoff of this at eighth grade parent night on March 23rd. And at that eighth grade parent night, I spend about a good 40 to 45 minutes really kind of going more in depth into the program, answering some questions. And again, that kind of kicks off the, the application process because the applications will then be due pretty much right when that presentation is over. And then you will have until mid-April to go ahead and submit the application. The application consists of middle school transcripts, letters of recommendations, and a writing sample. This is not a program where you apply and you're in. It is a program where you apply and you have to be chosen. Um, and what we're looking for are kind of some of those things on that prior slide of making sure that the student's in this for the right reason, but that the student is going to be able to handle it and take it seriously too. Acceptance letters go out in late May. You start the registration process in June. And come end of August, once the student starts at Beckman, they will be doing the college courses at that point. Okay. Now, if you need more information or just have general questions, um, obviously you can uh, put it, you can use the, the chat, you can use the QR code that shows up on slides here. Um, there's more information on our website. And again, I know you can't click on this right now, but it, it will be sent out after tonight. Uh, it'll be posted with live links. Um, Sarah Hungerford tends to handle our, um, our dual enrollment and coordinating that if you have questions for her. Robert's a great resource. We're, like I said, extremely lucky to have him here. Um, but there's his email as well. You've got the IVC website. And IVC actually has a, a piece on their website dedicated to the early college program. So if you have more questions, that's also a good place to go to there. Um, so Robert, thank you. I appreciate your time tonight. You're welcome to stick around. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to some other programs here. All right. Um, 
so like we've talked about early college, early college is one of the programs that, that people tend to, that, are, that attract people to Beckman. Um, one of the other ones that, that's uh, pretty high on that list as well is, is our arts program. Um, we have probably one of the biggest and most decorated arts programs in Orange County. Um, you'll see OC Varsity does, uh, you know, uh, OC Artists of the Year every year, and we are almost always at or near the top in most categories. Um, maybe aside from OSHA over there that, that's strictly an arts school, I would argue we're one of the, the best in the county. Um, for us here at Beckman, we do preach the four A's. That's the academics that everybody takes part in, but then activities, athletics, and obviously the arts. Um, we try to get our students to participate in as many A's as we can. Um, and again, the arts happens to be a fairly big A here. Um, for us, as students move through the pathways here in arts, the, the end goal is that they will have access to um, some of the best music schools and be able to succeed um, at these music schools uh, when they're finished here. Um, for us, something somewhat unique are all of our arts teachers have some professional experience in their field or a master's degree. In most cases, it's both. Um, each of them, each of our, our, our disciplines is broken into levels. So uh, they progress through kind of a beginning and intermediate and an advanced. In some, and I'll show you in just a minute here, um, there's also AP levels. We have those typically in um, the visual arts and not necessarily in the performing arts. In terms of an AP, that's usually music theory, but we do not offer music theory here. There's some reasons for that, um, but that's one you won't see. Sometimes we get questions about that. Um, for us, our art students have the opportunity, the ability to compete in festivals, exhibitions, competitions. Uh, you'll see on the next slide, in fact, let's just go here. Um, these will be links to videos on YouTube that you can see the type of work and projects that our students participate in. Um, one of the highlights that our orchestra, it's been our orchestra has gone and our choir has also gone. Um, every year they go to, to sing or, or play um, at Carnegie Hall in New York. Um, that's every two years, I'm sorry, I think I said that. Um, we also hear this was a Beauty and the Beast musical that involved our theater team, our choir, our orchestra actually played in the pit uh, for this. Um, but these will all be links that you can click on um, and you can see the different productions that we put on, the types of things that, that students who participate in the arts here uh, will participate in. Um, this is one, I won't go into to too much detail. I just want people to see as we click through these, the different progression that they'll see in the various uh, fields. So fine arts here, this is like our drawing and painting path. They'll start with exploration art and move uh, drawing and painting and then to advanced drawing. This is where you'll see an AP studio class. Um, you'll notice in all of these pathways that generally it's a three year sequence and not four. And the reason for that is because sophomore year, it's, it's difficult to squeeze an elective in and still have six classes. Um, in order to do an extra elective, you would have to have a seven period day and we try really hard to keep kids out of that just to make sure they're not overloaded. Um, so you can see we do offer fine arts, theater arts. Um, we have a filmmaking pathway um, that starts with dramatic production then digital film and then actually independent film projects. Um, graphic design and visual imagery are similar. Graphic design is more kind of, it's almost like logo design or, or uh, graphic design for like company uh, logos. Um, visual imagery tends to deal with more photography. Um, we'll move right in here. We do have our performing arts. We have a, a choir path, um, instrumental music band, and then orchestra. There is a difference between those two and the types of instruments that are played and the types of music that they focus on. Um, and again, you'll see three year sequences in most. Instrumental music with band, they'll usually do symphonic or wind twice, uh, sometimes three times. Um, now, if you have questions for any of our arts pathway people, here's the contact information for those guys. I will tell you, um, right now it's concert season. And so our, our orchestras, bands, and our choirs um, are actually, there's a concert tonight. So if you do email uh, one of our, our arts teachers, just know it's a really busy time right now. 
So it may take them an extra day or two to get back to you. So again, don't take it personally, but if, if it takes longer than a couple of days, you might want to try emailing again, only because sometimes um, emails do get bounced uh, with our, our uh, email service. Um, now, some other opportunities that students have here that are fairly unique to us, because of our relationship with IVC, we actually have some dual enrollment opportunities uh, outside of the early college program. I would argue we probably have more dual enrollment opportunities uh, than any other school in Orange County. I can't say it for sure, but I'm I know for sure with IVC, we have the most. Um, and these are the, the four that we currently have. We're always working on additional ones um, and they're all based on student want or need. So let's start here, sports medicine. We, it, sports medicine, basically athletic training. Um, it's hands-on. They start with an anatomy course, um, move into a specific sports medicine course, and then actually take an IVC class. Um, I'll go into that in just a second here. Um, take an IVC class that uh, is an internship where they're actually working with our athletes. So you'll see our students actually, again, taping our football players or, or baseball or whatever. Um, and these are all active shots from our kids. Um, the internship program just gets some great exposure. And it also helps us build um, just kind of a school community. Uh, so it's been a great program. This is what it looks like. They start with human body systems, which is a PLTW, Project Lead the Way class. Uh, the sports medicine class is an ROP class. That is, and all of these are on our campus, just to be clear. Um, the Kinesis 85 is an IVC specific class. It's on our campus, in our classrooms, taught by actually our own trainer who is employed by IVC. And then Kinesis 212 is actually where the internship takes place. Um, some students at that point aren't necessarily, maybe they've decided, ah, eh, maybe I don't wanna you know, see blood or, or see treat injuries. Uh, they'll take the nutrition route. And some just are more interested in the nutrition route. Um, and you'll see up here, you've got ninth grade, 11th grade, and then 12th grade here. And that's because like we talked about earlier, 10th grade, there's just not room to squeeze an elective in there. Um, we also have a business course here uh, or a, a year of business. What we found, we survey our seniors every year after they or just before they graduate and ask them, hey, what are you, what are you wanting to do? Um, at some point we found about 19% of our, our seniors wanted to go into business, but in high school they hadn't had business. And so we partnered with IVC to come up with a business program here where students are actually taking college level business classes and you can see the sequence that they take. These are actually uh, smaller courses. So there, there's three courses that they take into a year. Uh, I'm sorry, four courses. There's intro to business first semester and then these courses are all uh, squeezed into a semester. Um, we also have communications. That's another major that we found kids would say, hey, I, I want to major in communications without necessarily knowing what that meant. Well, now we offer communications one and comms three. Um, this usually takes place their senior year. Sometimes we can squeeze it in their junior year. It just depends on, on demand and how many seats we have in the class. Just more often junior and senior year is when spaces in their schedule open up. Um, and so that's when they take those. We also have a, a, a class somewhat unique to us is online dance. Um, and no, there's no dancing required. I think that's one that a lot of the the kids are afraid of it because they think that they have to dance, but no, it's actually a dance history class. And what's great about this class is it's an online course that's mostly asynchronous. And when we say asynchronous, we basically mean kids can work um, at their own pace for the most part. There are some dates and some things where they have to have certain things completed by, but it's a class that, again, it's a college level class. They get college credit for it. Um, but it's self-paced and it doesn't fit within the bell schedule. It's outside the bell schedule, giving them just some extra flexibility in their day. Um, if you have more questions about that, again, our website is a great place to go. Sarah Hungerford's our dual enrollment coordinator. So she's got more information on that. You can put questions in the chat or use the form here if you have questions after the fact, um, but we'll respond right away. Um, the last one that I want to talk about here real quick, and it looks like we're just about out of time, so it's perfect, is our engineering pathway. This is one that a lot of uh, students are interested in. Um, it is a three-year program, and again, you'll see a whole 10th grade just because of the scheduling. Um, but again, they start with an intro class, then move into a little bit higher level of engineering, and then it branches off into CompSci A or CompSci Principles, uh, where they learn the programming side a little bit more in depth. Um, 
our students do learn the design process and they use CAD. Some of these are just student design, uh, CAD designs uh, that they've 3D printed and then colored. Um, they also use, uh, they, they build mechanical and civil engineering obviously as well, but then that generally leads them into, I'm sorry, there, there's coding, uh, I forgot about this one, but that generally leads them into um, robotics. A lot of our kids in the engineering path uh, find their way to the robotics team. Um, we have about 120 kids in, in, in engineering right now, roughly 40 right now are participating in our robotics team. Um, it's just something that they've generally gravitated to. Um, and that's where they'll compete. They'll build robots and compete in games. Uh, they design these, they build these, they actually document their designs and their thoughts and have to explain that to people, uh, to judges, and then they compete. Uh, we actually compete in robotics worlds. It used to be in Louisville, Kentucky. This year is actually in Dallas in April. It's something that teams have to qualify for, but generally it is one where we'll send multiple teams to worlds. Um, this is one too, if you have questions, uh, Mr. Sitz, the teacher, he runs the robotics program and the engineering pathway. Um, and then our computer, the computer science side of the house is Mr. Muller. His contact information is there. And at this point, we've covered the information and we got to our, basically our time threshold. So with that, I wanna thank you all for popping in. Again, if you have questions, feel free. Uh, to reach out, you can either email these people or, and we're not going to go into this one, we just don't have enough time. If you want to use this QR code right here, go ahead. You can send questions after the fact if they come up and I will respond personally. Um, so again, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. And that's it. Have a good evening.